Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to Mr. P's Gazette class. I hope you're all well. I'm sure you're not missing me too much. Um, sorry about the face, sorry about the video. The face is not good for TV. The voice is not good for radio, so maybe I'll be texting next time. Here we go. We're going to practice our shooting. I know how much you love to play basketball. I know how much you love me correcting your technique and making you do drills, so here we go. We're going to learn to shoot the basketball with a tennis ball, or if you don't even have a tennis ball, you could even use an orange if you had to. I wouldn't go with anything softer because you might end up cleaning it up off the floor. We're going to do it lying down, and you don't need that much space. So in your bedroom or in a living room, a space where you have enough room to lie down. The most important thing when you shoot the basketball is A, that the elbow is at 90 degrees and the elbow is tucked in. The other thing, so that's the elbow before and then as you release, you fully extend the elbow. That's the two things. So you either release it at full extension or near to full extension and make sure you follow through when you're finished. We're going to do this lying down. We're going to do it with a dominant hand, non-dominant hand, two hands and one hand. So here we go. I'll start off with the basketball. I'm going to lie back. I get in my shooting pocket. I like to have it about halfway. Some people like it a little higher, a little lower. I want you to hold the ball in front, turn it. You do the same with a tennis ball if you have one. Hold it in front, turn, keep the elbow tucked in. I'm going to lie back, shooting pocket, lie back. Elbows in, bring it in with your other hand. 90 degrees, slight hyperextension of the wrist. And if you have a basketball, run the fingers perpendicular to the lines on the basketball. Two hands, non-shooting hand does not influence the ball as you release it and you push the ball straight up into the air. Okay, see if I fully extend the elbow, have it run off the index finger and the forefinger as I release the ball. Okay, a couple of not very good ones there, but that's better. Let's try the non-dominant hand. If nothing, if you don't want to shoot with your non-dominant hand, it will do nothing other than help you with your dominant hand shot. Some of you might find your non-dominant hand is a little bit better because you haven't developed a lot of bad techniques practicing the wrong thing. Here we are. Tuck the elbow in, 90 degrees. Non-shooting uh, non hand is not going to influence the release at all. And push up into it. Not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. Here we go. Release with the shooting hand only and push up into the air. Again, not too bad. I don't think I fully extended the elbow on that one. If you don't have a basketball, hopefully you have a ball or something that you could use instead. Maybe I'll just try this one-handed. It's a little small to get two hands on. See if I can fully extend, a little hyperextension here. Bring the elbow in and push it up into the air. Here we go. Well, that's no good. Not bad. I don't want you to drop it, even if it's offline and goes back a little bit or to the side, you have to catch the ball. But nothing else, we've developed a little bit of hand-eye coordination along the way. Tuck it in, extend the elbow, let it roll off the index finger and middle finger. And push up into the air, another bad one. Holy smokes. Here. So I'm just gonna continue on with my non-dominant hand, and then I'm just going to alternate the hand. And as you develop your proficiency, try and do it with a little bit more urgency, with a nice smooth release. Practice as much as you can, and it'll pay off when you get back on the court when we're safe and sound on the other end of COVID-19. Be well. Stay tuned for tomorrow, I've got another game for you. Take care.